All right. Thank you, Mr. Bankhead. Um, good morning, class. Uh, you are all going to do just a scratch page of paper real quickly. We're going to do a warm up. Make sure that you are prepped for this quiz. We're going to check our homework answers, and then we'll take your quiz. After that, um, there is a video to do today's lesson. Thank you, Mr. Bankhead, for your help. All right. Um, right here, you will see the warm up. So a circle has a diameter that has endpoints negative 3, 4, and 7, 12. Find the center of the circle and the radius of the circle. Use your answers in part A and B to write the equation for the circle. <coughs> so just break out if you go ahead and pause real quickly. Let students have a few minutes to work. We shouldn't do too long. And then hit play and I'll show some answers. Thank you. So to find the center of the circle, this is our diameter. We're gonna find halfway, find the midpoint. Okay, seven. I'm just gonna do it real quick. All right, so we added our x's, cut it in half, added our y's, cut them in half, and two eight is the center of our circle. How's that gonna help with our equation? Well, we've got x minus two squared plus y minus eight quantity squared equals, and then we need our radius squared, so we need to find the radius. How do I find the radius? Well, when I think about my circle, diameter, center, the radius is going to be between the center. Some people like to do the whole distance and then cut it in half. I like to go from the center to the side, but whatever, whatever works for you. So I'm going to find the distance between these two points, right? <clears throat> so I find that the radius is the square root of 41, but technically, I don't need just the radius. I need radius squared. So I need to square that and square that. So really, I just get 41. So that would be the equation of my circle. All right. Hopefully that was what you got. If you didn't get that, you can check with a neighbor if you're still confused. All right. One more answers. Lesson four, I will have already had this video up, so hopefully you've already had time to check it. Um, finding the midpoint, finding the distance between two points. Right. So you, in your homework, you have to practice with that exact same one um, more problem. All right, check those answers. Next page, oops, sorry, I'm back, wrong way. There you go. Alright. Good. So we're taking our center, doing x minus that, x minus or y minus the y, but it's right opposite of the negative, it's positive, and then r squared. So we take the radius and square it. Alright. Here we're practicing completing the square. We'll work on more after the quiz. Right. So here it's asking for a trinomial and factored form. So if you had written x minus 11 over 2 squared, that would be fine as well. You didn't have to write it out as two exactly the same problem. It's fine to write it as some quantity squared. All right. Here we have some circles, write the equation, right? Find the center, put it into your equation, find the radius, right? Radius would be the same in all four directions, and then square it. Just gotta remember to square that radius. If you're not sure, there's a formula sheet and it says radius squared. So feel free to use that formula sheet. Any more? No, okay. So if you go ahead and pause on the video, um, students are going to be in rows. If you're not already in rows, let's get them into rows. Um, there are two versions. So, Mr. Bankhead, if you'll go ahead and pass out one version to each row alternating. Students know that you do not need with any of each other's papers because um, that's called cheating. I don't do that. All right. Uh, do your best. Um, finish up as quickly as you can because we do have a lesson to move on to. Okay.
All right. <clears throat> Hope the quiz went well. Um, let's make sure all of those get turned in. Uh, we are on page 21. If you'll turn to page 21. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are going to convert the equation of a circle from general form to standard form. So, hmm. General form to standard form. That's why it's kind of off. Okay. So this is just a bunch of terms, and we want to write it in the, the standard form of a circle looks like this. Some quantity squared plus some other quantity squared equals radius squared, right? That's what, that's what we're, we're aiming for. Uh, and I know that the x goes here and the y goes there, and that's what my standard form of the circle looks like. You already know that. Okay, so here it takes you through step by step and tells you exactly what to do. I don't know that I'm a fan of, this what makes it look like there are so many steps, and it really isn't as complicated as this makes it seem. Okay, but let's read the directions and see what it says. Swap the second and third terms to get the, the terms in the x together and the y together. Okay, I like this step. Let's get all the x terms together and let's get all the y terms together. So I'm going to put x squared minus 10x and I'm going to leave a space because I want to finish that trinomial. I'm going to complete that square and then I've got plus y squared minus 4y then I've got this 25. So it says get the whole number off the left side. So we want to move this 25 over, get it out of the way for a minute. Okay, again, I'm going to leave a space equals, and to move it to the other side, we have to subtract 25. Okay, so we're going to subtract 25. Just get it out of the way for a minute. Okay, so we did this. Put our x's together and our y's together. Move the number out of the way. So that's the second step. Here, I'll color for a little. The second step is move this out of the way. Subtract 25 from the sides. Okay, so that's step two. All right, step three. Skip a space after the x term and after the y term. Well, I already did that, right? Like, that's what this is saying. You can do that all in one step. Just leave a space for yourself. We kind of did that. All right, complete the square on the x term. Okay. So to complete the square, as you guys did on your sideline packet, hopefully, you remember we're taking this negative 10, cut in half, right? Negative 10, cut in half, and then square it. So half of negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So we're going to add 25 to this side. Complete the square on the x term, complete the square on the y term. Okay, so here we completed the square on the x term. But wait, can I just add 25? Does it randomly out of nowhere? No. I mean, if I add it to the left side, I have to also add it to the right side of the equation, right? So we're keeping that equation balanced by adding 25 and subtracting. I'm sorry, adding it to both sides. There is another strategy to add and subtract to the same side, but we're just going to add to both sides for now. Okay. Um, so, now we want to complete the square for the y term. So we're going to go over here. Half of negative 4. Negative 4, cut in half, and then square it. So negative 4 is negative 2, right? Cut in half, and then 2 squared is 4. So to complete this square, I need to add 4 here. And I need to also add 4 there. All right. So that would be this step. So now we want to factor the x term and factor the y term. So we are going to take this trinomial and rewrite it as the quantity x minus 5 squared. The number one question I get here is, well, where'd the 25 go? Well, where'd the 10 go? So if I multiply negative 5 times negative 5, I get positive 25. If I add negative 5 plus negative 5, I get negative 10. That's my middle term. So x minus 5 quantity squared is exactly equal to that. Okay. And over here, we're going to rewrite this as y minus 2 squared, because that's what's going on there. All right, and then I need to simplify. So negative 25 plus 25, those cancel out, equals 4. And there's my standard form, right? All right, so I don't, I don't know that I really need to write, write it again. We already got it, okay. But I think this number of steps makes it seem like it's so many things to do. 
Um, get your x's together, get your y's together. Uh, complete the square, complete the square. Make sure you're doing it to both sides. And rewrite, rewrite. Okay, so if we were to write this again, x's together, y's together. Um, complete the square, the square times two, and then rewrite. And that's pretty much, I, I think three steps is a little less intimidating. Okay. There it is all clean and neat. Okay, so uh, step one, step one, x's together. Okay, put all my x's on the same side, x squared, plus 8x, okay, and then take my y's. Notice I'm just doing the, the square and the linear term. I'm, I'm not worrying about that constant, okay? So I've got these two, and then I'm gonna leave a little space. And then y squared minus 2y, and then I'm gonna leave a little space, and then I'm gonna move this 64 over to the other side. Plus 64, okay? So we need to complete the square. I haven't really changed anything. I've just moved things around a little. Right, I moved I move things to the other side, or, right? I added 64 to both sides. Be careful to not to just move negative 64 to the other side, because that would not be accurate. Okay, so I'm gonna complete this square. Half of eight, eight cut in half is four. Four is greater than 16. I have to add 16 here. I have to also add 16 there, All right? That y squared was a positive, so I'm gonna put a plus there. Okay, cut negative two in half. Half negative two, negative one. Negative one squared is one, plus one. Can't just add it there, I have to also add it here, plus one. All right, we're almost done. We've got um, this right here is a perfect square trinomial, right? This is double B and this is B squared. So I can take that, cut it in half, and see, aha, four plus four is eight, four times four is 16, make sure to write my square. Plus, why, what is this? This cut in half is negative one squared. Negative one times negative was that. Negative one plus negative one is that. We're good to go. All right, now to add this up. Uh, let's see, that'd be 65, one, six, seven, eight, 81. Uh, plus 81 times eight, That's convenient, because our radius would be nine. Great, so we just changed something from kind of this general form into standard form of a circle. All right. Um, I think I have shown enough examples. I think it's time for you to try one. Mm -hmm. So take a minute. I have a bunch to practice. So take a minute, try number two. We'll check our answers and then you can have some time to practice. All right, go ahead, Ms. Rainha. Thank you for going pause so that students have a minute to try this. I'm going to do it. So. Let's check our answer. Make sure we agree. X quantity x plus 12 squared plus y quantity y plus 3 squared equals 16. All right, then we know what our center is, right? And we know our radius. All right, great job. Um, feel free to check in the neighbors if you're having trouble. There are, I'm going to do somebody else's work. That to me looks way more complicated. It, I guess I do everything kind of on one line. If you prefer lots of little steps, is they put all the x's together, all the y's together, then they move their 64, then they make a space, then they, I, I kind of do all, all more than one step. Okay, um, so there's a bunch more practice. You can have some time. I'm gonna kind of fly through this. I'm not thinking the answers right this second. Um, okay. So you have a bunch more practice, and then there is a matching activity on the next page that you can uh, match the one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight with the ABC. Um, right. Let's do homework. What is homework? I think you have the worksheet for homework to so make sure make sure that gets passed out. Um, you need practice with this. This is not something that just like magically comes to you. We are going to. Oh, you know what? Homework five is the same as homework four. So you already did homework five. Okay. Um, so let's say this is homework five. 
work is page 23 that you're matching um, the standard form with the general. All right, take some time, practice. I will go back and we can show some answers. I imagine by now class is over, but if it's not, here, here are the problems. You can hit pause. Once students have taken a minute to try those, hit play and the answers will pop. Ooh. There we go. There are some answers. It turns out that everyone doesn't turn out as a perfect square for the radius, but that's okay, right? You would just square root that would be nine, but square root that would be root 22. Here are the other problems, and here are some answers to those. Should you have time to look at them? Okay. Thank you for watching this video. I will post it on um, Google Classroom the night before, so some people may have already watched it, and that's fine. Um, all right. Thank you, Miss Bankhead. Have a wonderful day.